Okay, so let's take a look at how to use a combination of tools to uh, remove some undesired objects here in this image. Here's an image of a varied bunting. I like, th I like the image, I like his pose, I like the light, I like the background, but I'm not particularly crazy, for example, of this little nub down here in the corner of that, and really this branch sticking out from his head, um, in my opinion, could certainly go. So I think what we'll do to uh, start on this image is we'll run through our normal workflow, uh, which we've talked about a little bit so far, and we'll just go ahead and play the action that I wrote to run through the workflow. So it asks if we want to make a new, a new layer to do the levels. We can say yes. Uh, we'll check in with our whites here. And a few, a few blown out bits, but nothing in areas that I'm too concerned with. Black point looks good. We might darken up the mid-tones just a bit. And we could layer mask here if we wanted to in this image. It's not really necessary, so I'll go ahead and hit play to continue. I'm going to tone down some of those branches just a little bit. Some of the highlights there. We'll say okay. See if check in with the saturation here. We might we might bump the saturation up a little bit. I think it could look a little more vibrant in this case. Go ahead and say okay. And then we'll check in with our contrast. And we'll bump that up just a little bit. Now we're looking a little better. And what we can do is select the background using the magic wand tool so that we can reduce the noise. What I'm doing is I'm just clicking through the image here to add to my selection. Uh, I've got the tolerance set at a fairly medium kind of value. So I will have to click a fair few times just to make sure that I get everything selected here. It doesn't take too long really. If you find you have little little bits like that, that's probably an insect actually that's in the frame, but we'll just go ahead and circle that with the lasso tool. Alright, we're looking pretty good. Might just add this bit under his belly there and a few other spots there that we missed. And that looks pretty good. So now we'll continue our action which is going to refine the edge it's going to reduce the noise, and then it's going to ask me if I want to save the image. I'm going to hit cancel on the save, because we've got some more work to do on this frame. My aging machine going slowly here. All right, we'll cancel out of the save. And now what we want to do is de make a deselect our selection, and then we're going to do some, uh, some removal of some of these undesired objects here. So. For example, this bit here, that's a really easy one for the content aware fill tool to deal with. No problem, easy. This guy over here will be the same story. So we'll hit the content aware fill and it's gone. Now, this is a little bit trickier here, getting rid of this branch, but still it shouldn't be too much of a, of a problem. The content aware fill tool is very good at blending things into the surrounding, but if it intersects with the subject that we're interested in, it's not going to do a good job. So our strategy here is to try to create a bit of a, a gap here between the bird and this branch here in the surrounding environment, and then the content aware fill tool will do a pretty a pretty good job, I think. So what I'm going to do is use the clone stamp. I'm going to use a pretty small brush quite small, and I'm going to use it at 100% opacity. And then what I'm going to do is select an area up here of just smooth green background, and I'm going to start to create, doesn't have to be perfect at this stage because we can clean it up later, I'm just going to start to create a gap between the bird and the background. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect, and we're going to clean this up later. We just need to create a nice gap. We also want to, if there's areas where it might intersect with this branch here, we kind of want to deal with those too, because that will throw off the content aware fill as well. And then we'll just continue along here, making our gap. And that should get the job done. Just clean that up a bit. Okay, so now we've got a nice gap between the bird and the surrounding area. So I can go ahead and make a selection here. I'm just going to be careful to go 
right through the middle of this gap and not hit the bird at all using the lasso tool here. And once I've got the fine part of the selection done, I can zoom out and continue to complete the selection of this branch here. Just make sure that I have a little buffer zone all the way around. I might have gotten a little too close there, so I'll just add to that selection. So that looks pretty good. Now we can go ahead and use our Content Aware Fill tool again. And hopefully it does a pretty good job of blending in the branch to the surrounding environment, which in this case is just the blurred out background. You never know exactly what Content Aware Fill tool is going to do. In this case, it did kind of a lousy job. It grabbed part of the bird. But what we can do is just reselect around around our, our object there, make sure that our selection is not touching there, and do it again. Let's see how it does this time. Much better. So we're almost there. We've got obviously some still undesired bits in here. Now how do we clean those up? We could use the patch tool, for example. We can go and select this blurred out area here and drag that into a more desired area. You can see here that we've got some artifacts from the patch or from the content aware tool. So we can go ahead and circle those areas very loosely and just start dragging them into uh, the surrounding neighborhood to, to blend them in a little bit better. Another technique that you could use would be to use the patch tool, a much larger brush than we were using before, and turn the opacity right down, maybe to about 4 or 5%. And then we can just click through these some of these little artifact areas. And because we're on such a low opacity, it just does a nice smoothing effect. So we're starting to look pretty good. The branch is almost gone. But we've got certainly some very noticeable transition effects here. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to look for areas that you can still tell that there was some cloning done. And I'm going to use, here I'm using the patch tool again just to try to smooth that out. Uh, we've got, we've got some, some business going on there. We'll smooth out. And now what I want to do is really zoom in here and clean up these edges. So I'll go back to the clone stamp. I'm going to use it at a pretty aggressive opacity. I'm going to make my brush very small. Something like that. And then what we're going to do is just clean up these edges. So we'll just come along here and just do the best we can to try to clean up any of these edges. This looks still pretty messy up in here. If you make a mistake while you're doing this, like let's say for example I slip and oh, I went into the bird there, it's not a big deal. Just go over to the History tab take a step back or you could hit control or command Z Z, for uh, taking yourself back a history state undoing what you've just done now one thing that I definitely should have done here in my haste to do this video I did not was I should have made done all these changes on a background layer and that would have allowed me to layer mask or just, just to see the, my before and after a lot better. But hopefully I'll do a good enough job here that we won't need to do that. So now what I'm doing is I'm just, now that I've cleaned up my edge, I'm just using the patch tool again to, to blend this area into the surrounding environment. I'm still not quite happy with that in there. I might just sort of lop some of those off a bit. Not too bad. There. So now we can see if we go back all the way to the beginning of our history, that was our before we did any adjustments. The image looks a little bit washed out, could use some contrast, could use some saturation, and of course has these undesirable um, aspects such as the branch coming out of the bird's head and our after things are looking quite a bit better 
and I think we're ready to save this image and move on to the next. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. We'll see you again soon.